put onto the cut bed. It's just being held down by the double stick tape. That's all we need. Uh, it's going to hold the material perfectly throughout the entire cut. Starting from our home position, the CNC is going to raise in the z-axis and move over to where it's going to start making the first cut. As you can see, as it makes a revolution, the spindle is going to drop down in an increment. I have this uh, project set to cut at 15 passes, which means it's going to take 15 turns to actually cut all the way through this uh, half inch MDF board. For the duration of this video, I'm going to go ahead and increase the speed of the video by about four times just to make this uh, a shorter video. Okay, what's happening here is that the uh, CNC is completing one path in a series of 15 passes and it's putting the tabs in and when it completes that path then it moves over to the next path and begins that cut. This is all done by the use of the G code that was created in Cut2D. I actually made this whole design in Cut2D. I imported a graphic of a gear set and then I traced it using the trace feature that's uh, included in Cut2D. Uh, you have to import BMP only, uh, but then after it's imported, then you can trace it in Cut2D and it will actually make the outlines for you. And then you just proceed as normal. I went ahead and arranged them on the uh, palette that I had, which was a 7x7, which represented the uh, length of my cut board, which is a 7x7 block of MDF, half inch thick. And I also added the tabs. If you notice when it's uh, traveling around, you might be able to see this, the z-axis of the spindle kind of bump up slightly as it's going over the uh, places where the uh, tabs are actually inserted. And those help keep the material anchored to the uh, waste material so they don't fly out across the room. You can see the double stick tape is working really good. Okay, and there you have it. It's all done. Now we're just going to go ahead and remove it from the cut board. Uh, the material was held in place by the little tabs that uh, keep it in place so it doesn't pieces don't fly away. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pop them out and clean them up, and there's the result. Uh, it only took me about three minutes with a little file and some sandpaper. Uh, I think the result looks pretty good. And uh, if you have any but they really are. They're very easy to work with. It is what you see. This bolts down to a nut that slides through there. Get that set and then use the top with a protective piece to really hold it down. And it's not going anywhere. Very easy solution. I was using the double-sided tape 
but it was holding so strong that it was actually tearing off pieces of the plywood when I pulled it off. So this seems to be working better. The plexiglass is all tied down. We've got that Dremel diamond bit set up and the file in mock ready to roll. It's also interesting, in using JS Cut, which is that really cool program, the feed rates are not in inches per minute. We're flying in millimeters here. Because I can't do a thousand inches per second on this machine. <laughs> but JS Cut, very cool program, very powerful. And I love how quiet this machine is. This is using a very small engraving cutter, a very shallow cut, and a very fast feed rate. I think we're going about 75 inches per minute. This is our second try, our second cut, using that very fine engraving bit. A simple base. That'll be glued there. This will be glued there, and then we'll put some holes for some red LEDs. Some fast, simple wiring. I'm going to use three red LEDs. And then for the power source, these are 12 volt LEDs, but they run fine on 9 volts. So I went through the junk bin and pulled out an old wall supply that we can get 9 volts. The view from underneath for our six LEDs. That's the base with a couple front and back supports. There's the base all finished. There's a sign all finished. very much for taking a look.